Hello everybody and welcome to the Hunter Gatherer channel and today I want to talk about repel and belay devices and just two particular ones. Um, this is the Mad Rock Lifeguard and this here is the Mad Rock Safeguard and uh, they both work well and they both do the same job. Um, this is for people that are looking to maybe saddle hunt or even some rock climbing and things like that. Uh, I got this because I started saddle hunting about two years ago and I watched a guy's video and he said, you need a Mad Rock lifeguard. And it was the red one and I said, oh, I need that because that guy said so. So I bought it and uh, it worked well for me. I was, I was careful with it. I didn't use it as my primary way of staying in the tree once I got to my platform. Uh, once I got up there, I would use a tether strap or rope and hook in with um, a Ropeman 1 so I could adjust. And that's what I used. And when it was time to go down, I would take my climbing rope and I would hook into it with this and I would rappel down. And it did well. It did what I needed it to do. Um, but then I started watching videos that said, no, you need the safeguard. That's the only one you should use. The black one, not the red one. That one's dangerous. Use this one. And I'm like, what in the world is the difference? So, if any of you guys have been looking for one of these safeguards because everybody says you need one, you've noticed that they're back ordered or that they're, the shipping has been delayed. COVID really killed everything. Anyhow, and uh, they're hard to get. And some people were charging double or triple the price. People paid some astronomical prices for these. I can't tell you exactly where to get one right now. Um, I ordered mine quite a while ago and finally got it in. Um, anyway, so the difference in the two is that this one is uh, springless. It doesn't have a spring in it, this one does. And it's this section right here that has the spring. I'm gonna open the safeguard up real quick just to get it out of this box and so we can take a peek at it. They are built identically from what I can tell except for it says this has a spring and this one doesn't see how this one just moves freely it can lock up and down this you have to really crank on it and it closes back up and you might think that's not that big of a deal um, but obviously if everybody's saying this is the one you want there's got to be something about it this is a disclaimer. I'm not a professional rock climber. I did not manufacture these items. I'm not telling you to do anything outside of the specs of these items. Uh, these both specify 8.9 to 11 millimeter rope, not to go below or go above. Uh, there's instruction manual in here as well. It discusses how to how to feed your rope through, and it specifies to uh, always use a uh, breaking hand to not let go of the rope, that it won't automatically uh, stop if you don't have a hand on the rope to give it more tension or to give it more friction. You need to follow the directions. I know some people go outside of the specs with their rope sizes and uh, that's a personal choice. Um, I'm not gonna tell you to do that or not. And uh, I would just say, do what you're comfortable with and follow the manufacturer's directions. Um, so we're gonna go out to the field, have the harness on, climb a tree, put the platform up, and see the differences between these two. So let's go check it out and uh, see which one I'll be using this fall during deer season. So we made it out to the field. I picked this maple tree. It's kind of in the wide open and it's pretty uh, branchless. And uh, right now we're just going to uh, throw the platform up and then I'm going to get up a little bit higher and we're gonna show the difference between the uh, safeguard and lifeguard.
For this demonstration, I'm gonna hook up a tether rope because I might get some slack in this and it could be a little dangerous or unsafe. So I just wanna show it to you what could happen and I'll have a backup on me just in case. I have a Ropeman 1 on this tether and uh, they work really nice. I just, uh, I wanna just use one piece of equipment and so that's why I'm trying to decide between the two here. And you could, if you wanted to, I could come up and uh, just hook this Ropeman 1 onto here and use that while I'm in the tree. You could also use a Prusik up here, whatever you want to, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, but trying to get it down to the less pieces of equipment is kind of the, the whole point of this. And maybe I'll decide to throw a Prusik in there or throw something else in during the season. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to bring myself back down a little bit and uh, bring this ropeman out, out of the way a little. So right now, I have the safeguard on. This is the one that's springless. And the, what the whole point of this is, is when you go and take your weight off, it stays, kind of stays put, it stays, stays in the open position like that, or the close, I, I don't know if you'd call it open or close. It stays where it has uh, tension on it a little. So I come up and, and stand, I can sit back down into it, and it's got a bite, it's not going anywhere. And this rope that I have is 9 millimeter rope, uh, Canyon Elite, and I went with a 9 millimeter because this says 8.9 is the minimum. So anyhow, you can grab here and, and tension it up a little bit or take some slack out or hold it up. I grab my right hand and, and pull that handle down and you can let some out. Give yourself distance away from the tree. So that is the safeguard. And I have the lifeguard in here. And we're gonna switch over to it. That's why I was gonna, also gonna put this on here is at one point I'm not gonna be connected to the tree. So we'll lift myself up. Get me into the Ropeman 1. We'll disconnect this. I'm going to switch my weight on the lifeguard. Bring this Ropeman 1 down some. Now, I don't know if you just noticed that or not, but right off the bat, I remember thinking, if you stand up, and when you go to sit back down, you see, it's not, it's not catching unless you have your hand over here, which it says in the instructions, then it'll catch and it holds. But if I go up without it and try to sit down, it doesn't hold. It's not holding me at all. So if you're up in the tree and you decide you want to stand up, and you go sit down, Whew. your butt clenches up a little bit when you go to it. <laughs> you get a little scared. You think, I'm gonna die. That's not gonna catch me. Let's see if I put the, the tether up there a little bit just so I, I know I've got something. You go to stand up and then you go sit down. That thing hasn't done anything. All of a sudden you're sliding down. Now there are things you can do Like, you can just give yourself a little stopper knot here, like so. That way, it'll get to the knot. And it'll cause it to close. The knot just there hits this and loads the spring. 
and then it's not going anywhere. So you could use the lifeguard and put a stopper knot in, you should be fine. You also can put a Prusik knot above it and just use that and take this off and only use that to repel. But that's the big difference between the safeguard and the lifeguard. Hey everybody, I got home and was looking at some of the footage of showing the difference between the safeguard and the lifeguard and uh, my lovely wife was videoing from the ground and that's the only angle that I really uh, had on all the footage. So I decided I'd come outside and climb one of the trees in the backyard and uh, I'm going to show you a little more close up of what was going on between the springless and the spring. Now that we're uh, double tethered in up there, we can check out what was going on. So this is the lifeguard. It's the red one and it's the one with the spring in it. You can see that it's pinched off there. I've got all my weight on it. And uh, the problem is if you take your weight off of it. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to stand up. I'm going to grab the, the tether up here and stand up. See how that springs down? Now I can just slide that right out of, uh, out of the way without any issues. When I go to sit down, it doesn't catch at all. So without, the, without this tether in there, I'm going to hold on to this one just to I go to sit down, I just go right out of the tree without holding on to this end. Now if I'm holding the, the tail here, I load it, that pushes up, I'm locked in place again. Okay, so stand up, go to sit down, and it slides on the rope. And it says in the instructions to not use it without holding this tail here. So you hold the tail and that pushes up and then it pinches it in place. So if I hold this tail when I sit down, the spring pushes up and we're good, we're set. Again, slides, hold the tail, doesn't slide. So one way to keep from having an issue is you just take this and tie a knot in it. Like so. Now, when you stand up, it disconnects, but when you slide down, once that knot hits, it can't go through anymore and it locks into place. So, you stand up, go to sit down, and that knot causes it to close and uh, you can't go past it. That knot's not gonna go through there. I hooked the other tether so that I could fall freely and have a safety device, but it's also so I can switch these two out. So I'm gonna get into my tether here Untie this stopper knot, just so it's out of the way for now. Gives me a little bit better slack. And then I'm gonna hook the safeguard in. So it's got the repeller, the rope comes down through and back up over on this side. Just like so. When you spin this up, Sounds like a blue jay to me. So here's the uh, difference without the spring. I stand up on the platform, it stays open. It doesn't just spring closed on me, right? I sit back down. Stand up and sit back down and you're good. Now you can still tie your stopper knot in there. If you uh, wanna be comfortable, uh, not nervous about what might happen just a good safety 
caution. The problem with having that in there is that if you do want to release or you want to go around the tree, say, maybe you want to get let a little bit in so that when you go around the tree you're at the same height. But other than that, that thing stays right where it needs to and uh, you don't have the issue that you had before. Now that we're back from field testing, I see what their point was. I had noticed it before, uh, before I got this one in. If I was up on the stand, um, up on my platform, and I stood up on the platform, that spring would snap back down. And if I didn't have a hold of that end rope, it would just slide down through. Before one sticking, I was SRT climbing uh, throwing a throw bag up over a branch or around a tree and pulling my climbing rope up through, girth hitching that, working my way up with a hand ascender and a foot assist um, through this with a carabiner above and I would pull up and down, or I pull down with this hand and down with this hand, move this hand again and do it again and I would work my way all the way up the rope. And I was using this to do that, but when I got to the top of the tree to where I put my platform in, I would put a uh, tether on the tree and hook into that. And then I would just put this, I would wrap that rope up, hook it up into the branches, and, uh, and then hook back into it when it was time to, to repel. So I never really noticed how the spring was an issue because it wasn't at the time. Until I started one sticking, and once I got up to my platform, I realized that that would uh, close or the spring would load up and then I would uh, be able to just freely let rope through. <laughs> so now that I'm one sticking, I think I'm going to just uh, go to the uh, safeguard because it held the whole time. I'll keep this because, you know, maybe I'll need it or maybe I'll, uh, if somebody wants to go with me, I'll have them use this one and I'll use this and put a stopper knot on it. It's not that big of a deal. But uh, for now, this is going to go in on my rope and uh, I'm going to have this one in the tree with me. So hook this on again, flip this up over, put my carabiner on. And this will be ready for the next time in the tree. And I'll uh, just put this in my bin of things I could use if I want to. That's the difference between the safeguard and the lifeguard. And um, if you're going to count on that to be your one device, you don't want to use a tether, you don't want to use anything else or any kind of other ropes, you just want one piece, I would say go with that. I don't know about all the other ones. Uh, I know there's many, many different companies that make different belay repel devices. Kong Duck pops into my mind, um, a Gree Gree, things like that that I know that people use. Um, I would say check them out. I don't know anything about them really, so it's uh, something to look into if you're wanting to try something different. That's going to be it. I want to thank you for watching the video. Hopefully it helped you out. Um, hopefully you got some information out of it. Um, before, all I heard was one has a spring and one doesn't, and you want the one without the spring, and I didn't know why. So I picked one up because I wanted to see. Um, sometimes you just got to test it yourselves. If this is your first time here, if you want to hit that subscribe button, that'd be awesome. And uh, maybe leave a comment below. If it's not your first time, thanks for coming back. And uh, hopefully you'll continue to come back. All right, that's it. I just want to let you know that we love you, God loves you, and we will see you on the next video. If you're gonna do some one sticking or some repelling, I hope you enjoy it, have fun, be safe, and uh, good luck this fall. See you later.